Hey everyone, this is Chris, back again with another new deck, as well as a quest that I expect some of you have been looking forward to for a little bit. We are going to be going up against the Wizard's Quest today. I picked some quest stages that I think are going to be interesting for this deck that I have, uh, as well as jamming together the seven encounter sets you need in order to make a full Wizard's Quest deck. Uh, if you want to play along at home, this deck is meant to be a little bit swarmy, a lot of annoying locations, just lots of effects that grow and fill the staging area, kind of make everything a little bit of a slog to get through. Uh, the sets are 17, 18, 19, 21, 23, 27, and 28. So lots of wargs, lots of little enemies, lots of locations. Like I said, uh, you're not going to see the troll synergy. You are not going to see the other Nazgul synergy. Uh, but there's definitely some interesting stuff going on here. And hopefully the encounter deck will play along. As for the deck that I am playing, uh, this is the deck that I was thinking of, or one of the decks that I was thinking of, when I said that I think... Long Lake Fisherman is going to be probably the most powerful card out of the wizard, uh, out of the Withered Heath long term. Uh, this is a Outland Swarm deck built with Denethor, so we have access to Steward of Gondor, uh, as well as Arwen, so we have access to the Long Lake Fisherman right away, and a little bit of help getting out the Ethir Swordsman if we don't manage to pull exactly what we need right away. Uh, there's a lot of other good synergies in the rest of the deck. Uh, there's the rest of the Outlands allies, of course. Uh, the deck has three copies of Herald of Anorian, which allows you to give it Doomed 2 in order to play an ally from your hand for free, or a small ally from your hand for free. And most of our allies are small, so that is, in fact, fantastic. Uh, we have Elven Light, which you can search for with the Fisherman as well, and helps to sort of really power the draw for the deck. Uh, very good tail, helps to swarm out even faster. Uh, this deck can get up to an incredibly, incredibly explosive start. I don't think we're quite there yet with the hand that I have, but it's pretty interesting, so I'm going to keep it. Uh, I also have already done the encounter setup, and I should say something about how I'm handling the enemy choice effects in the Wizard's Quest. Uh, Wizard's Quest is designed generally assuming that you have an opposing team who can make choices about how to resolve quest stages or some treachery effects. And I obviously don't have that. I'm sitting here at a table by myself as a laptop. I suppose I could go on Discord and ask people to pick, but that would just be slow. Uh, so when I can, what I'm going to do instead is just sort of discard cards off the top of the encounter deck until I find something that matches. And when I do, that's what I will pick rather than spending a lot of time agonizing over what would be the worst. So that was how we got this Howling Warg Pine Slope start, uh, which does actually seem pretty annoying. Uh, yeah, that's enough of me rambling about setup. So let's just get straight to the action. Draw my card for the turn, and I just drew Steward of Gondor, so my slightly janky opening hand is now an incredible opening hand, uh, minus the fact that I don't have any Outlands allies. <laughs> so I'm going to spend effectively two on playing two Envoy of Pelagears, uh, because then I can use those Envoys for a very good tail. I haven't looked at this deck, so I'm not going to shuffle it again, just to save a little bit of time. And I will probably short circuit that a little bit throughout. Ooh, okay. Uh, I will take Hunter of Lamadon and Knights of the Swan, and all the rest of these get discarded. Uh, Hunter of Lamadon's response is only a play, so I don't get to do it now, but maybe in the future. Uh, 
Hmm. Yep. I will cycle this Elven Light with Arwen to draw a card. Well, that's a fun one. Uh, spend these two for Herald of Minorian. Doomed 2 takes me up to 27 and allows me to put a Warden of Healing into play. Uh, this very good tale is gone. And I hope by now that you can sort of see what I mean about the explosive starts. So let's quest. Uh, three, four, five, six. Committed to the quest up against four. Uh, my main goal is just not to lose by too much right now. I have to be able to defend that Howling Warg. So, oof. All right, well, that, that's sort of nightmare mode for the start. Two Pine Slopes is eight, nine, 10. I send three, four, five, six. So I have to raise my threat by four. All right, well, we're at 31 now. That's kind of unfortunate. Uh, there's only three Pine Slopes. So if I wait, maybe I could be fine. Uh, now I think I have to travel to Pine Slopes, which raises my threat by two more. So 33. I will engage this Howling Warg because I don't have a choice. Uh, Denethor will defend. No damage. I can swing back for one, but that is not good enough. So that is the end of the first round. Took up my threat to 34 and refresh all my characters. Uh, now what we really need more than anything else is to draw well. All right, and we are up to three resources on Hirluin. Good, more Outlands. Uh, I will spend two for an Imladris Stargazer, and I will immediately Stargaze, because I have an Elven Light in my hand, and I would like to draw... <laughs> All right, well... I have two more Onfilus Herdsmen. I suspect I just didn't fully shuffle all the clumps away. So we'll put a Herdsman on the top. We'll move this other Elven Light to the bottom and that should be fine. Cycle the Elven Light, draw into a second Herdsman. I can do one, two for two more Herdsmen. Uh, can I put cards here and see them? Sort of. All right, so we are questing again. Uh, three, four, five, six, three in the staging area. I want to be able to kill this warg, which will take two of these or one of these and like all of these. So I will send seven to the quest. Uh, hope I don't reveal a big enemy. I do not. Watched path. All right, so I'm gonna make one progress this round. Come on, Ethere Swordsman. All right, so Howling Warg makes an attack. I will defend with Denethor. No shadow effect, he takes no damage. Uh, and I can swing back with the team to get rid of that Warg. Now all I really need to do is quest way better. Uh, this is gonna be an Envoy of Pelagir, which is fine. So, tick up to 35. Oh, refresh all these guys. And draw my card. It's the Envoy, like I said. Gain my resources. Uh, before anything else, I will Stargazer. One, two, three, four, five. And I sort of said I wasn't going to do this on the video, but I don't think I have much of a choice. Okay. Yeah. Let me put that one on the top. I will cycle Elven Light to draw a card, which is a Long Lake Fisherman, which is great. I'll spend two on Hirluin to put an Envoy of Pelagir into play. Add the resource to Arwen because she's a noble hero. This allows me to pay two for the Long Lake Fisherman. 
One, two, three, four, five. I forgot that I looked at these, but what I really wanted to do more than anything else, sorry, I forget if I said this out loud, but I was naming two on the off chance that I would get an Aether Swordsman. But the big thing that I wanted was to shuffle my, the top of my deck away so that I am less likely to draw the redundant Elven Lights and Steward of Gondors that I was seeing. Um, was there a steward? No, it was Elven Light and... Forget what else it was, but there were a bunch of redundant cards and I would rather draw into a Swordsman sooner or later. So, <laughs> of my one card in hand, we are gonna go to questing. Uh, I have no enemies right now, so I think I don't have to worry too much about combat. Uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten committed to the quest. Uh, the Necromancer's Reach is not in this encounter set, so that should be fine. All right, Restless Hunters just gain Surge. Howling Warg. All right, are you a Warg? You are not a Warg. So up against six, seven, my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten makes three progress, literally just enough to clear the pine slopes, uh, which allows me to travel to Watched Path. I will engage the hunting warg, the howling warg, excuse me. Uh, I will defend with Denethor, who takes no damage and Hirluin and the Little Outlands allies can kill the Warg. Uh, I guess at some point soon I should travel to Razgabel because the extra card is worth it. I don't really need the resources though. So up to 36, uh, maybe one of those Elrond's councils would be good now. <laughs> Refresh my super messy giant ally state. In the next round, I get all these resources. Uh, and at some point, I'm just going to stop tracking resources on Herowin. It is not worth it. Okay, going to discard Elven Light. Spend two on Arwen for another Long Lake Fisherman. Um, I guess before I do that, I should Stargazer. One, two, three, four, five. Because I can look at these and decide in advance what I want, put things on the top, etc., etc. Oh, I'm going to feel bad for shuffling these away, but anyways, play the Fisherman. I pull out the Aether Swordsman, and I shuffle these back in. And that's exactly what I wanted, so we are going to play that right now. There's an Aether Swordsman. Uh, I'm sorry, my staging area is running out of room. So yeah, no cards in hand. That is it for me this turn. We are going to quest. Uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's probably good enough. Uh, eleven up against three in the staging area. Oh, this is a card design that I actually hate. I wish it just said Surge. There is one in the discard pile, so it Surges. Okay, another watched path. So I sent 11 up against six, seven is four progress. One on the path, three on the quest, and I will discard, and if this is an enemy, which it is, that gets added to the staging area. Uh, yeah, at this point I will travel to Rosgabel because it draws me a card and puts a resource on each of my heroes, uh, which allows me to immediately get Elven Light back and draw another card. Uh, and I am forced to engage both of these enemies. Not too bad, but I wish I had a warrior of Losarnak. But I don't, so we're just gonna have to deal with it. Uh, I'll have Hirluin defend these dark bats because that will make them go away. He is gonna take two damage. 
I discard the bats and then reveal the top card of the encounter set. Okay, Wade down gains surge. All right, under the shadow. Doomed one ticks my threat up. I guess you can't see that because that far away is slightly glary with my setup, but it's a condition attachment and now I can't play more than one card each phase. I'm okay with that. I think I will be able to live. Denethor will defend Eastern Crows. Glad to not have to deal with that location. Uh, and I could just have Ethere Swordsman kill the Crows. And Warden of Healing heal one of the damage off of Heerloin. So, tick up to 38 threat. Refresh the swarm. Shift everything over to try and be a little more nice for the staging area. Yeah, all right. We will now have seven resources on Heerluin. Draw my card. Uh, and I am going to cycle Elven Light with Arwen during the resource phase. Oh, I don't actually get that resource. So that I can still play a card during planning. And the card of my choice for planning phase is probably unsurprisingly uh, second Ethere Swordsman. So now my willpower should be pretty great. Mm, forget which stage two I picked for myself, but I think it is probably worth pushing through it regardless. Uh, do I have any Outlands allies in my discard pile? I do have one. All right, so let's go to the quest phase. Uh, in the quest phase, I will spend one for a Men of the West. Allows me to pull this Hunter Lamadon back into my hand. And now we're going to quest. So three, four, five, six. Uh, that becomes 12. Let's send 16 to the quest, up against 5. Okay, that definitely surges. All right, so 16 up against 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Means I make 8 progress. Uh, 1 on Rosgabel, which flips it into the... Rider of Mirkwood. It's currently sitting at two threat. Uh, I totally forget how much progress I said I was gonna make. Three, four, five, six, 12, 14, six progress. So five on the quest. All right. Uh, I will travel to Watched Path. This Rider of Mirkwood is going to stay in the staging area forever, so in the encounter phase, let's engage some crows and some flies. Uh, good news is I should be pretty easily able to kill one of these. All right, uh, Denethor is gonna defend against the crows. Attacking enemy gets plus one and an additional shadow card, so okay. Three attack crows do not deal any damage to Denethor. Uh, Herald of Anorian will defend against these forest flies. Reveal an encounter card or treat this attack as undefended. Well, undefended one damage is fine, so there we go. Uh, and forest flies takes up my threat to 39. I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six attack right now. That's unfortunate. I used two traitors to kill these Eastern Crows and two, three, four, five to put four damage on Forest Flies, uh, which means they will stick around for a little bit, but that's okay. We'll Warden of Healing to remove that damage. Uh, and while we're in combat, I am going to Stargazer figure out what I'm going to draw next turn for my real draw and my Elven Light draw. 
Okay, yes, I am stacking two Alan's allies to the top, even though I can only play one of them. Uh, and next round, I will get an Elrond's Council, most likely, which will help deal with this threat. So, uh, that's not bad. Refresh takes us up to 40 threat. I will be shocked if we lose this quest to threat, honestly. But Elrond's Council is basically the only tool I have to uh, manage that, so it, it could be bad. All right. Draw my card, like I said, get these resources up to eight on the Herluin. And again, in the resource phase, I will cycle Elven Light, drawing into that Warrior of Lotus Knock. So, uh, planning, I will spend one on a Knights of the Swan. Uh, Warrior of Glosternock is good, but I don't need the defense as much as I need the attack. So, let's quest yet again. Three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, Eleven, twelve. Uh, is twelve going to be enough? I think twelve is going to be enough, so let's go for it. Twelve up against four. Okay. That is uh, 12 against 10, so I make two progress. One on the quest, one on the path. Uh, that is an enemy, so it comes into the staging area. Is it revealed? Nope, just added. So, engage that Howling Warg, get my shadow effects ready. Denethor will defend the Warg, taking no damage. I put the encounter deck back on top of the discard pile. All right, Denethor is taking no damage. Uh, Herald of Anorian will defend against the flies. Attacking enemy gets plus one. So Herald of Anorian is destroyed. My threat goes up by one for the forest fly effect. Otherwise, no big deal. I need three damage to kill the forest flies. So that is that. And four damage for the Howling Warg. Gets rid of those. Might as well Stargazer again in combat. Out of all of these, guess I'll put an Elven Jeweler up at the top. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so I'm gonna get Elven Jeweler and Elrond's Council. Uh, that'll help me get around this and just be a good generically useful ally. So, okay, tick up to 42 threat. I'll draw my card for the round, get these resources. We're up to 10 on here, Lewin. Uh, and I will play Elven Light with Arwen during the resource phase. Yep, okay, moving into planning. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, moving into planning, I'm going to spend two for a Warrior of Losernach, so now I have a little bit more defense. Uh, I am going to discard Elven Light and Warden of Healing, play an Elven Jeweler, or rather to put an Elven Jeweler into play, which is not the same as playing it. Uh, I can't play Elven Light until probably travel or engagement. I'm um, not sure why I did not... Oh, yeah, save the threat. Not deal with pine slopes. That's fine. All right, questing. Uh, I will play this Elrond's Council that I drew. Drop my threat all the way down to 39. Uh, and count one extra willpower on an ally this round. So, three, four, five, six, seven... Eight, nine, I only need to make one progress. 
it's nine. Might as well send the swordsman to make it 15. We reveal Necromancer's Warg. All right, that's not bad. So my 15 up against eight is enough to clear out Radagast's request, sending me on to stage 2A. I'll search the top five for a card with cost one or less, so I'm just going to discard until I find one that matters. Uh, not that one, because it doesn't do anything. Sure, that is the one that we're going to get. Swarming Mosquitoes which is going to get revealed and be uncounterable. So that is going to kill an Envoy of Pallor Gear. Yeah, sorry, Envoy. And on to 2B. A fork in the road. Uh, search the encounter deck and discard pile for a location with cost two or less. So I'm going to look for a two cost location. I don't fix up the well i should have just discarded because it was the first one the sorcerer's tower get myself another resource die all right so we're going to be a little bogged down by this my <laughs> staging area is a mess but okay basically i have to put five progress on fork in the road before i can travel to sorcerer's tower and i have to travel to the sorcerer's tower before I can clear anything out, or before I can move on. So, before all that happens, uh, travel. I will not travel. I guess I can play this Elven Light now that I am unrestricted, so let's do that. Draw myself a card. And Necromancer's War is going to do one damage to a character. Go on here, Lumen. Oh, sorry, that was that. Gets a shadow effect. Defend with Denethor. Defending character does not count its defense. Ooh, I forgot that was in here. All right. So two damage makes it through. Uh, might as well immediately heal one off of each of those with the Warden of Healing. And it only takes three attack to kill the Warg, so... That's fine. All right, refresh takes us up back into the 40s. Uh, before refresh, actually, I should Stargazer. One, two, three, four, five. We have two of these. I will take uh, Weaver and Elrond's Council. I don't need the extra Stargazer. So, and then everything stands back up. Draw my card, get my resources. I don't need to count any more of those. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna Elven Light with Arwen to draw a card. I will Stargazer right now uh, to look at five of these. One, two, three, four, five. There's an Outlands card I can put on the top. So I'll spend two for a Hunter of Lamadon, discarding this Hunter of Lamadon, which goes in my hand, and the one that I knocked off onto the floor goes back on top of the deck. I will play another Hunter, and I know this one is not, but I don't need that Stargazer, so the discard is fine. Uh, I can spend one for another Onphalas Herdsman. Uh, and I will spend one off of Arwen. I guess first I will play Elrond's Council to drop my threat to 37. And then I'll spend the one for another Galadrum Weaver. I don't have any of on the table right now, so we're just going to slide these over here with the Jeweler. And um, that's going to shuffle this Council back into my deck. I don't need more stargazers, so shuffling like this hopefully means that I will pick up because one of the Outlands allies that I'm missing. Just Warriors of Losernock, basically. We'll see how that goes. 
All right. Now I need to make quest progress, so that is what we are going to push for. Three, four, five, uh, nine is 14, 15, 16. Honestly, might as well just send these guys to 22 committed to the quest up against uh, 7 11 in the staging area. That should be good enough. Uh, we get 24. 24 up against 11. I reveal Restless Hunters, which surges into a Dol Guldur Beastmaster. Interesting. All right, so my 24 up against 13 is 11 progress, so 6 and 5. Oh, and uh, that treachery that I revealed should have doomed 1 because of Sorcerer's Tower. So now that there's enough progress, I can travel to the Sorcerer's Tower. I am forced to engage the Dog Holder Beastmaster. Uh, and that pulls out a Necromancer's Warg, which is this one. Does a point of damage to, I'll just put it on an Onphilus Herdsman. I'm technically instructed to shuffle the encounter deck, even though I didn't look at it. And it's only two cards at this point, so here we go. One and two. Uh, let me preemptively heal. Hmm. I will defend the Beastmaster with Hirluin. Even if I get that no defense shadow card, I will be fine. I did not, that's a location. Uh, four attack up against two defense is two damage coming through. And Denethor will defend this one. He ends up taking one damage from that shadow, but nothing else. And I get to fight back. So here is three damage to kill the warg. And I have four, uh, 10 to kill the Beastmaster. It's completely unnecessary, but it works for me. Uh, and I'm gonna shuffle this encounter deck now. And we're gonna move on to the next round, having used up all of my allies just to ensure that I have to stand them all back up. All right, 39 threat, everyone refreshes. Can't use the Stargazer this round because she is already exhausted. All right, and I draw my card, that's a good one. I don't care about that anymore. So, uh, I will use Stargazer one, two, three, four, five. I'm not using her optimally, but that's okay. Uh, let me put Warrior of Lucernock and Elrond's Council up at the top. Uh, let me put the Council up at the top first. So I'm going to cycle this Elven Light to draw my Elrond's Council. I will spend two for a Herald of Anorian Gonna come hang out with the envoy from Power Gear. I am going to doom myself for this. So tick up my threat by two, because it lets me play out another Warden of Healing. Uh, and I have Elrond's Council to counteract that threat. So let's quest. Just need to clear this location and then we are on, uh, but there's gonna be a bunch of treacheries that happen when I do. So uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, these guys make it 17, 18, 19. Do I want to take it up to 25 or do I want to hold back? Uh, I could get another Pine Slopes, so let's make this 25. Up against 7, we reveal a Goblin Sniper. I can play my Elrond's Council now to take my threat down to 38. I make more than enough to blow past the Sorcerer's Tower. So that is gone. Uh, it shuffles this and I discard until I get a Treachery. Uh, 
Uh, okay, I reveal Restless Hunters, which I guess is going to surge because there aren't any enemies engaged with me. Turns into Treacherous Fog, that does nothing. And I move on to stage three. So 3A, the Necromancer's Tower. I search for a card that costs two or less on the top five of the deck. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five. I am actually gonna pick because I feel like otherwise this is just gonna be silly. Uh, and all these cards are kind of irrelevant. Yeah, uh, do we reveal this card? I do reveal this card. All right, well, I guess I'll pick Howling Warg. Shuffle the rest of these back in. Howling Warg gets revealed, and there's a possibility that I get another Warg. That's not a Warg. Uh, and this laptop is making noise. All right, so we're on to 3B. After we quest, treacheries happen automatically, but if I make 20 progress, I win the game. Uh, so I have to, I'm not going to travel. I have to engage these two enemies. One, two shadow effects. Uh, before anything else happens, I will heal. Like I said before, uh, Heerlin will defend the four damage attack. Taking two. Denethor will defend this two damage attack, taking none. And I need four to kill this warg. And what is it? Seven to kill the goblin sniper. So here's three, nine. All right. Pick up to 39. Just stand up all these characters. This is a bad deck for me to play on the video, but it basically is going exactly how I wanted it to, so I can't feel too bad about that. All right, draw my card for the round. Get my, I don't care about his, get my resources. As well, spend two for a Warrior of Losernach. I'll cycle Elven Light to draw another card. Sure, why not? Here's two for a Stargazer. Maybe I should kill the Nazgul just for fun. Anyways, we are just gonna quest more or less all out. Uh, so here is three, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 22, 23, 24, Plus so another six is 30, 36, 37, 38. Uh, plus another six makes 44. Up against seven in the staging area. And now that I've committed characters, I discard until I get a treachery and I, there's one. Uh, okay, power sevenfold. I don't think that's actually gonna do much, right? I could discard the pine slopes, but they're probably not gonna turn into anything worse. Uh, I can't discard, I mean, I could discard the Nazgul, but that's definitely not gonna be worse. Uh, okay, so that treachery does basically nothing. And there's Under the Shadow, which dooms me back up to 40 threat and my 44 committed to the quest up against eight in the staging area is way more than is necessary to finish off this stage of the quest very comfortably. I could even heal Hirluin if I really cared about score. I could have killed the Rider of Mirkwood last round too, uh, if I had been planning for that. Yeah, uh, it is Outlands with some new tools to sort of ramp up the consistency and some old tools that most people don't bother using in order to accelerate early on a little bit more. And it did exactly what it was meant to do. 
uh, you know, minus some misplays and some poor stargazer memory on my part. But I'm not too disappointed considering that uh, my board state is now so large, there is no room for a staging area, and it has sort of run off the edge of my playmat. I really can't complain. All right, everyone, hopefully you enjoyed this look at the Wizard's Quest and a very silly Outlands deck. Thanks for watching.